Uh, Stacey, thank you very much for being with us on a very important day. There's a great deal of talk about closing the stock market down for two or three days. What's your response to that? Hey, let me just give you some context for all this. This is a clip from earlier this last week reacting to the speculation that our president, President Trump, may be about to shut down the stock market for safety, to prevent losses. Now, in my opinion, if you're not comfortable with losses, you shouldn't be in the stock market. Things go up, things go down. But either way, the speculation has been so great that the head of the New York Stock Exchange has been making her rounds, encouraging the public to the public that, hey, this should stay open. Listen to this. There's a great deal of talk about closing the stock market down for two or three days. What's your response to that? I think closing the market would be the wrong response because it's important that investors have access to their money and it's certainly not a long-term view. I think we're seeing a lot of volatility. Obviously, we're seeing a lot of volatility in the market right now. That's going to be how it's, it's reflecting the anxiety and pressure that Americans are feeling more broadly and how that's sort of showing up in the market dynamics. I've had a lot of conversations over the past couple of weeks with government, federal, uh, local and state officials. Everyone's looking and addressed, uh, very focused on how they can make changes that will be helpful. So I think right now people need to focus on their safety and their health and the long term, the, market, the markets will be a, a longer term correction. Uh, you know, we'll address the issues in the markets longer term. Yes. Yes, the markets should stay open. If, if this was a free economy, then the people should have the choice what to do, when to do, whatever they want to do with their money, with their investment. But I get it. I mean, we have been tanking so heavily, so consistently these last several weeks. I get it. It, it can be painful. But just for some context, because this is from multiple days ago, for some context, since then, the markets have gotten worse. But really, what's the problem? Uh, Stacy? I'm hearing a lot of talk about um, the difficulty of actually making the trade and establishing a price, that the bid and the ask are very far apart, and it's hard to come together on a price. That implies, and it's very technical stuff, but that implies uh, the market is having problems functioning very efficiently and smoothly. Is that what you're seeing? Uh, not, not so much in the equity space. So single stocks are, are trading and operating uh, as designed. Okay. Obviously, she says it's all going to be good. It's all going to be okay. And I hope it is. And eventually it will be. But the problem is, especially for the United States, we have at least a few more weeks of pain, if not a few months. And for the U.S., more people are being told not to go to work. More people are being told just stay home for your health. And I totally get that. But the United States right now, confirmed cases is growing exponentially, along with the whole country, the whole world, growing exponentially. Well, from what we've heard as the next steps, moving into these next few weeks, what is the plan to combat this pandemic? The next three things that President Trump is eyeing is grounding the jets, halting stock trading, and ordering shelter in place. Now, shelter in place is already a thing here in California. We're not allowed to leave our homes unless I'm going to the grocery store. One out of three has happened. Well, what about grounding the jets? This obviously is to prevent spreading of the virus. Well, as of the latest news, the airlines are considering doing this themselves without a government mandate. The airlines are considering a once unthinkable possibility halting US flights themselves. Now, that's a big deal. Something like that hasn't been done since September 11th. Now, it's not certain as of yet that the administration will take that action, which would be the first time the U.S. instituted a blanket air travel ban since the wake of September 11th, 2001 attacks. And also, it's not known whether a ban this time would last two weeks, a month, or longer. But several airline executives told CNBC that they are considering all possibilities. And hey... I like that. I support that. Whatever gets us a whole lot less of this. Let's keep these numbers down. So that brings us to number three, halting stock trading. Because really, besides health, besides family, these are the numbers that President Trump cares most about. I mean, this is what he ran on, pumping the economy, strong economy, because he wants his stock market as president to outperform every other president in terms of percentage growth for the stock market. So let's compare. This is the amount of growth that the stock market had under Obama, grew over 148% by the end of his two terms. Well, how about Obama compared to Ronald Reagan in terms of percent? Near similar. Well, how about Clinton? Whoa, he had the most, 228%. Again, 
after two terms, eight years. Well, how about George W. Bush? Okay, well, obviously he had the 2008 financial crisis. I get it. Well, how about all these people compared to Donald J. Trump? Okay, again, it's no fault of his own, but right now, where the economy stands right now, this is worse than where he began his presidency. It's a little bit lower since Trump's first day in office. And again, it's not his fault. He's fighting right now to correct that, but he's gonna do that in whatever way he knows how. So if he does that, when? Well, it's being speculated that what's more, so stocks don't tank further, the administration under the plan being discussed it would stop trading on Wall Street when it grounds US passenger fleet. The Bush administration made similar moves after the 9-11 attacks. Now, the plan could change tomorrow, and if it does, when it does, this channel will make a video, this channel will keep you informed, but these two steps, these few steps, potentially could be next. And you know what, this one, I understand. This one would 100% stop the spread of the virus, I hope. And the last time that was done was for a good reason as well, that was during 9-11, the same time that the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ closed. After the September 11 attacks, the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ closed until September 17th. So in this case, they were closed near a week in 2001, which was the longest shutdown since 1933. Now, back in 2001, this to me makes way more sense because the NYSE and the NASDAQ, they were close to the tw uh, Twin Towers. We don't know if more planes were coming down next, but even so, after a week, after a week of the markets being shut down, when President George W. Bush and bankers reopened Wall Street, the first week of trading saw the S&P 500 slide down more than 14%. So it still slid down. Now, is that better than just letting the market react freely? I don't know. But this is a potential future that you have that you have to think about as an investor. I think it's going to be very interesting watching what the markets do when they open up tomorrow. Trump has gotten increasingly, increasingly somber in his press conferences, just, just managing expectations that potentially this crisis could stretch over the summer. I mean, he doesn't want to admit it, but we're really just playing this by ear right now. Watch a reporter asks him, and he talks about a recession. He brushes it under the rug. Watch this. Stock market took another hit today. Is the U.S. economy heading into a recession? Well, it may be. We're not thinking in terms of recession. We're thinking in terms of the virus. But I guess the point is, in times of crisis, just be ready. This is a potential future. Hey, next piece of news. Breaking news. A member of the U.S. Congress just proposed a plan for minting two $1 trillion platinum coins that the Federal Reserve would then purchase. Two coins worth $2 trillion. And just like that, a movie about the greatest heist in history just got the green light. Now, this is real. I'm going to link the full document down below in the description. Check it out. But the piece, here's the piece. Check it out. This is how they're going to fund all the stuff they want to fund, potentially in the USA. The program would be funded directly from the Treasury using its legal authority to create money. Now, the mechanics of this funding approach would be as followed. The Treasury Secretary would direct the U.S. Mint to issue two $1 trillion platinum coins under the legal authority provided by this code. Well, once they have the coins, what are they going to do with it? Well, Congress would then direct the Federal Reserve to purchase the newly issued coins at full face value, so they would force them to purchase it. The Federal Reserve would complete the purchase by crediting the U.S. Mint's account at the Fed with $2 trillion in reserves, and then the Fed would retain ownership over the two $1 trillion coins permanently in order to ensure its own balance sheets remain fully capitalized by the Treasury. So they're just going to print their own money. Print their own money. Now my question is, why two coins? Why can't they use bills? Well, here's some perspective. $1 million in, let's say, $1,000 bills would produce a stack of bills four inches tall. $1 billion in $1,000 bills would be a 300-foot tall stack, and just $1 trillion of $1,000 bills would be 63-mile-long stack. That would be a lot of paper money. Now, I don't know why they couldn't just put a little number, make it all digital. I guess they need the physical presence there. But either way, this is what's being proposed to fund this economy. Weird times.
that's the video for today. My name's Austin. Like always, see you tomorrow.